And oh boy, did it become busy fast. There was a crowd of people as soon as we opened the door, and they're all clamoring to see the internet sensation, Jelly Donut. They pour in like a leak in a ship's hull. Landry tells me that sometimes we have to cap the number of people allowed in at a time, but it's not that bad yet. <sighs> Hopefully the numbers stay down until Graves gets back. We'll need the crowd control in the afternoon. Where the heck is he, anyway? I'm sure he has a lot to deal with. There's a lot more to managing a restaurant than what goes on inside, I'm sure. He always comes to help out sooner or later. Doesn't he not show up here? I don't think I've ever... I don't remember him uh, helping us with tables. <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble picturing Graves waiting tables. Maybe he wears that uniform Reese is so obsessed with. Still gotta find out what that is. Alright, I don't have time to sit here daydreaming about what that could possibly be. There are tables to wait. Boy, are there a lot of orders for donuts and coffee today. I didn't even know that was on the menu. I guess it's pretty on point to offer donuts on a day where Jelly Donut is in the cafe, but somehow I hadn't expected it. I don't see them in the pastry case. Maybe they're still in the back? I better go check. Hey Mason! Are there donuts back here? Oh, yeah there are. A whole stack of them, and they're still warm! Oh, they're those cakey donuts that are so good, too! I shouldn't be hungry after such a big breakfast, but they look amazing. The coast is clear. I don't see Mason. Hayes and Reese aren't even in the room. I could just... Sneak a donut, since that's probably a thing to do with Mason, and I'm not on our route right now. Just one donut won't hurt, right? I reach out my hand, and... Feel another hand on my shoulder. I freeze. I can feel her lean in real close. So close I feel her hair brush the side of my face. Gonna pay for that? Oh man, I forgot about these cat donuts. They're so cool. Uh, oh, uh, so sorry, I... Uh, don't steal from my kitchen. She says it in such a low, calm voice, but I will never, ever think about it again. Sorry, I, I won't do it again. You're right, you won't. She ruffles my hair and is gone as quickly as she appeared. I pity anyone that ends up on her bad side. Hopefully I'm not one of them. At least she ruffled our hair. Now stop wasting time, it's busy out there. R right Mason dumps the tray of plates in my hands and shoes me out of the kitchen. Bye, Mason. I bring the plates to their respective tables. I'm getting really good at this waitstaff stuff, if I do say so myself. Oh, thank goodness you're back, Avery. We're so swamped. Avery to the rescue! This is still a bit much. It's like we're under a waterfall of people who want to see Jelly Donut. Or something. I don't know, I'm too busy to think of a good metaphor. <laughs> One of my favorite things is that Avery is not good at thinking of good metaphors. But Finley's loving it, though. Look at her just mug for that camera. There, there she is. Oh, and there they go again. Someone else trying to put their donut on her head. Uh, excuse me, please read the rules. We can't let customers bring food to the cat play area. Fine, whatever. Jeez, you see something on the internet and you think it's okay to do in real life? Some people. Someone better talk to that kid about these bad habits she's encouraging in people. The offending customer has already vanished back to his table, but now there are three people who've taken his place. We need more babysitters! One at a time, please. No flash photography. Oh, thank goodness. Reese and Hayes are back out to help corral the, 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 the crowd. <laughs> Reese has taken a spot at the door as the world's tiniest bouncer, and Hayes is taking someone's order. Which reminds me, I better get back to work, too. We're in the final stretch, but dang is this exhausting. My pockets are bursting with tips, but that's not much consolation if I feel like I'm never gonna leave this place. I could really use a break. Hey. Hmm? What's she doing out here? Does she need a break, too? I suppose I shouldn't be too selfish. I'm not the only one working my butt off here. Get in here. It's not a request so much as a command. I better go see what's up. 
Hello? Did some kind of baking bomb go off in here? Is my mouse still working? We're all taking turns bussing tables, but this crowd hasn't left much time to deal with dishes and cooking utensils. I need your help. And here I thought you didn't trust me in the kitchen. I don't, smartass. I need coffee. Yeah, me too. No. We're low on beans. Get them from the basement, right around the corner. I'm swamped. Oh, duh. Yeah, of course. Uh, just a sec, I'll get them. I've never been in the basement before. It's probably not a great idea to get someone to help me out, but... Dark spaces kind of creep me out. This is a restaurant, not a haunted house, and I'm not some scaredy cat. It should be fine. Here goes nothing. Here goes everything. Hey, Beatrice! <laughs> oh, thank you, TKSI, for pointing that out. Beatrice is back! Does that mean Graves is, is secretly Mr. Eugen? Hmm. Nah, can't be. They just both have a thing for skeletons. Holy crap, Graves. I tried to give you the benefit of the doubt, and this happens. I find Beatrice down in your basement. This isn't a restaurant storehouse, it's a Halloween surplus store. It's not... It is. That's a curio full of model skeletons. What the hell? What's he got padlocked in that cabinet? Do I want to know? Yikes, I better get out of here and go back upstairs quickly before I get attacked by a giant toad. I find a giant bag of unground coffee beans that I'm sure I can just barely lift myself. But more interesting is the book that's resting on top of it. Ah, this book. With its worn leather cover embossed with silver swirlies in the shape of a cat, it looks like a spell book or something. It's probably Graves' diary. I'm so curious. It wouldn't hurt to take a little peek, right? What the heck? I don't get this at all. Is it all written in code or something? This is all nonsense. Wait a second. Why is my name in here? Ew, is Graves writing about me in his diary? Barf. Avery. Ooh, she sounds mad. Now's not a good time to start reading. The book is real tiny and fits just right in my hoodie. I'm gonna look through this when I get home. It's probably nothing, but... After seeing my name in it, how could I resist taking it home for a better look? I'll bring it back before anyone even notices it's gone. Okay, but seriously, I should leave before a crow lands in my hair or something? I have the coffee bag in my arms and trundle up the stairs back to the kitchen. Ah, oh, the light of day. It was way too quiet in that basement. I barely get the door open when I hear muffled noise from the dining room and the clanging of pots and pans in the kitchen. Get lost? Took you long enough. Sorry, I don't know my way around down there yet. Creepy, isn't it? Yeah, I'm glad you said it. It gave me the chills. I like it. Somehow I'm not surprised. Thanks. Now get back to work. Uh, okay. Any time? The whirring of the coffee grinder starts immediately after I start talking. This conversation is probably over. Better get out there and see what's going on. Looks like the crowd has dissipated. I also don't see Finley, a uh, jelly donut, anywhere. I guess even her energy has its limits, huh? Heh, <laughs> well, there she is. Hey, Kitty, how about some coffee? I had a real busy day at work. Oh, there she is. Wow, she looks worn out. I bet that does take a lot out of you. Wait, cutie? Dang, is she just being friendly or is she making a move? Well, we won't find out now, but we'll get you a coffee, girl, because you deserve it. One coffee coming right up. You want me to put anything in it? Oh, you sweetheart. Skim milk and two sugars, please. You got it. I fetch her a cup of coffee just the way she likes it. Once I make it back, I catch her looking at her phone. The cafe got some really good comments today. We should see a nice boost in traffic from this. So, is this what you mean by social media expert or whatever? Yep. I run the company message board and all those other accounts. Jelly Donut was something I started doing to get more cafe traffic. I didn't expect it to get so big. It's actually a lot of fun. 
You should join me when you start transforming too. I could use a sidekick. Oh, yeah. I'd forgotten about that until just now. Uh, sorry. I'm just trying to help. Here, come sit with me a sec. It's quiet enough that Landry can take care of the remaining stragglers, so it should be fine if we sit for a minute or two. Really, though, it's gonna be fine. We all stick together here, and you're a part of the family now. Got it? You have sprinkles in your hair. She reaches up and finds a treasure trove of sugar stu stuck in her bangs. <laughs> so I do. I mean it, though. Got it? Yeah. Thanks. Got any room for another at this table? Huh. Guess there weren't too many left after all. I glance downstairs and it looks like he's already locked the door. Always! Landry scoots a chair next to Finley. I guess the cafe's closed now. I expect you all won't spend too much time lollygagging. We have cleanup to do. Jay's dad! <laughs> lollygagging? Really? I don't know, it was the first word that came to mind. Reese, why don't you sit with us too? We could all use a break. I suppose so. Where are Hayes and Mason? Oh, you know Mason. She's probably already gone. She doesn't stick around after shifts to help with cleanup? She gets here earlier than any of us for prep, so it's only fair she also leaves early. Besides, I think she has something that she does after work. What, as a cat? Hey, don't judge. I wonder what kind of cat she is, anyway. Feels kind of rude to think that, but you know what they say about curiosity and cats? Hey! I should see if she's here to thank her for her work. I'll be right back. Tell Hayes to come join us if you see him. You got it! Wow, the kitchen is pretty clean already. Was Mason that quick? Oh, there she is. I caught her before she could go. Mason! What? Oh! Um... You really busted your butt today. Thank you! That's my job. She's already got one foot out the door. She seems irritated that I interrupted her. Have a good night, girl. Uh... Well, have a good night! Hmm. And with that, she's gone. Boy, is she hard to talk to. She disappears around the corner, but a second later I catch a glimpse of a lanky orange cat with a crooked tail. Maybe that's her? It looks like she's heading in the same direction as my apartment. I wonder if we're neighbors? Probably not. That's kind of silly to assume. When I get back to the kitchen, I hear the sink running. It looks like Hayes is doing the rest of the dishes. Why doesn't he come out with the others? Poor boy deserves a break as much as the rest of us. If everybody's a family, like Finley said, he should be part of it, too. Now, I was gonna help Hayes with the dishes, but... I think it was CJ Marblebean? Um, told me that actually inviting him to go back to the others raises affection with him. So, I will do that. So, thanks for the tip, CJ Marblebean. I hope I got that name right. <laughs> hey, put those down. Come out, we're all gonna sit and have coffee together. I'm fine, thank you. What, you don't like me now? What? what I'm just teasing you. Come on, you're one of us, and I'm sure you're tired too. I'll come back and help you with the dishes after we're done. I'm sure I won't be the only one, either. We gotta stick together, right? I guess so. Come on, I'll get your coffee, even. I'd rather get it myself. I'm a little picky with my coffee. Oh yeah? How so? I prefer a good cappuccino instead. We have a nice espresso machine here. Oh, like the one you made for me in my interview. That was really good. Oh, thank you. A cappuccino is steamed milk and espresso. It's a delicate balance. Can you make me another one? Sure. Aww. Oh, is that a smile? It is! I'll go make them now. Meet you in the dining room. I head out to the cafe. Hayes walks with me at first, but slips upstairs as soon as we reach the staircase. There are a series of loud, whirring noises, and he returns with a cup in each hand. He's careful as he hands me mine. 
It's still a little hot. It looks amazing. Thank you. Oh, Haze, you darling, darling boy. I head back upstairs, coffee in hand, and return to my seat. Hayes follows shortly after and sits at the table next to us. I reach out and drag his table a little closer to ours. Come here, you. We all sit and talk over coffee for a while. We divide the tips, careful to leave a separate stack for Mason when she gets in tomorrow. It's getting pretty dark. I should get going soon. I say goodbye to everybody and head out. They're all staying late again. I can understand that. Of course I'd want to be human for as long as possible. I'm going to enjoy this while I can. The gravity of the situation weighs on me as soon as I'm out the door. Right, so we're going to walk home. I wonder if this is when we meet the Rust guy. Nope. This is when... Oh, right, this is when Graves gives us the... um. The bookmark, so that we can start learning magic. Anyway, I'll bring you back when we come back to a cat's paw. Ah, right, well, it's been a while now. She's been learning some magic. Mochi's getting real friendly now. And, um, well, now she is deciding what she wants for breakfast. So she, should she go to the corner store for coffee or just get some from work? I'm very curious about this corner store, but when I went to work the first time, we get some snuggling action with Hayes. Not with us, unfortunately, but there's some snuggling action going on, so I think we should go to work. But I will check this out at some point. Let's just get some from work for now, though. You know what? Why waste money when I can just get some coffee for free at the cafe? I'm still not real great on the water to coffee grounds ratio, but better I learn with myself than with customers, right? Last time I tried to make coffee was a disaster. It came out as this gross brown water. I really have to learn to do this right. Ugh. Get it together, girl. Huh. Doesn't look like anybody's here yet. There are some lights on in the cafe and on the floor above, but I don't see anyone moving around inside. Maybe I was wrong about people coming here on their days off. Is it really just going to be me hanging out at work like I have nothing better to do? Alright, I'll go make some coffee and then figure out what else to do for the day. Luckily I just got my key. I can unlock the door and let myself in. Even though there are no people here, the cafe still feels busy with all these cats milling around. There goes Hash Browns bossing around some other cat like usual. Now is making eyes at his own reflection on the floor. Kotick's in a cute little ball by the window. Marina and Ain are catching some sun. Aw, Junta has his paw around one of the other cats like they're spooning. Who is it? I peek in closer to get a look, and maybe a photo. But when I see that little seal point nose sticking out, I pause. Is that... Haze? Ah, it's so cute! His ear flicks and one eye shoots open. Looks like he takes a moment to register what's happening, but once he does, his eyes dilate to the size of saucers. Uh, Avery! His tail puffs up and he backs away from Junta at a surprising speed. He bumps into the wall and then hops a solid six inches into the air in shock. Hayes, calm down. It's just me. I... I just... I... Junta was crying a lot and... and... and then I just sort of... Oh, please don't make fun of me. Aw, poor baby. He's like, please... Don't, don't like me less, just because I was trying to help this cat. Junta is one of our newest cats. He's a sweetheart stray we found wandering the streets, but he scares easily, so he gets clingy sometimes. Why would I do that? That was really sweet of you. Slowly, I reach down and scratch Junta behind the ears. He's confused by all the commotion, but doesn't seem too stressed about it. But I... You're so thoughtful about the cats. It's great. Uh, oh, I guess so. Thanks. I'm jealous, actually. I wish I could sleep in a pile of cats. <laughs> ah, I love this cat haze face. It's so cute. It is pretty nice. He seems to have calmed down a bit, thankfully. How about some coffee? I could go for a cup, and I bet you could too. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to change back. D don't look, okay? You got it. Despite being around all these cursed cat people, I've never seen a transformation in progress. Maybe it's not something I'm supposed to see. 
Anyway, it's probably as rude and creepy as watching someone get changed, so I'm not about to peek. Okay. Would you like a cappuccino? I'll go make us some coffee. That sounds great, thank you. Score! I don't have to mess with the coffee machine after all. I sink into my favorite spot on the big circle couch and take a big old sip of my coffee. I could sit here all day. Maybe I will. Oh! Avery, you're here early. Yeah, I thought I'd come see what everybody's doing. I've been cooped up in my house too long. It's good to see you. I'll be around doing some handiwork, but let me know if you need anything. Oh, don't worry about me. Sounds like you'll be busy enough. There's that door again. Hello, hello! So, Avery! What breed are you? Do you know yet? Uh, excuse me? Cat, I mean. Sorry, is this still a sensitive subject? No. Nothing's happened to me since the day I grew the whisker. I figured it'd take more time. That's strange. I turned in about a week. Yeah, me too. Hayes nods from the other couch. This wouldn't be the first time Avery's slow on the uptake. Were you just standing there waiting for a chance to say something like that? Of course not. He totally was. <laughs> They're right, though. Playing with that book made me totally forget about the curse. Why haven't I seen any changes since then? I wonder if there could be a connection. Well, I'm gonna go do some laundry. Let me know whenever you find out. I'm betting you'll be a silver tabby or something pretty like that. I hope the type of cat I become is still a person. Reese rolls his eyes and flops down on the long row of seats to the side of the cafe. He settles in with a spiral-bound sketchbook. Finley picks up a large bag and trundles toward the stairs. Is there a laundry machine up there? Yeah, in Graves' apartment. He lets us do laundry there for free. Wait, Graves lives here? Yeah, duh. The third floor is his apartment. Shouldn't we see him, like, all the time? He's basically a ghost as is. He's usually out until really late at night and leaves pretty early in the morning. I don't think he sleeps. He's a vampire. I bet he sleeps in a fancy coffin. <laughs> I just mean he's really busy. He takes care of all the administrative stuff for the cafe, after all. Hmm. Well, I better get to work. That ramp isn't going to build itself, after all. Landry gives me a little wave and disappears into the back. Have fun with your handiwork. He's back a few minutes later with hands full of lumber and a roll of carpet. So that's why all that stuff was in the basement. Sorry, it might get a bit noisy in here. That's no problem with me. I suppose if you must. Landry and Reese go back to work. A few minutes later, I hear Finley. I peek up at the balcony and she's fiddling with a laptop or something. Everybody seems to be keeping themselves busy. Maybe I should help one of them? But on the other hand, I'm not getting paid for it, so... And most importantly, none of these people are who we're trying to get after, so we're just gonna stay put and drink our coffee. Eh. I'm gonna stay here and finish this delicious coffee before I do anything. This is my day off, after all. We all get caught up doing our own thing when I hear footsteps approach from the kitchen. Why, if it isn't the big boss himself? Hi, Graves. My wonderful cat herders. I see you've been keeping the place well while I've been gone. He looks us over, but his gaze stops on me for just a second. He has a weird glimmer in his eye that I can't really place. He can see your magical aura now, Avery. Ew. I'm on you, buddy. I know you have something to do with that book. It can't have just been there because you're a collector or something. Heck, it has our names in it. I don't really understand those pages since the bookmark doesn't work on them, but still. It must be something fishy. Landry. Excellent work on the cat's equipment, as always. Ah, uh, but I'm not done yet. Have you ever given me reason to doubt? I know you'll do a stellar job. We can talk about future designs soon. Sure thing, boss. Maurice, I see you've been keeping your protege in line. Keep up the good work. Of course. Nothing gets past me. The eyes and talon of an eagle. 
protege? Are they talking about me? Hmm. Haze, my sweet Haze. Can I trouble you for some of your exquisite coffee? I'd be happy to. You are a treasure as always. I hope you've been keeping well. Uh, oh, well... Finley! Finley peeks her head over the upstairs balcony to shout down. Come on, just come downstairs. Present! Your videos are keeping me busy. We had a whole new attendance record the other day. And six adoptions in two days. The home inspections never end. I'm sorry you have such a precious, adorable girl here making your business work. You are my internet lifeline. I have no head for such things. I bet he's been lost since telegrams went out of style. Ooh. And Avery. <laughs> oh, he's, re he's real close now. I don't think I like it. He puts his hand on my shoulder and levels his gaze down to mine. That blue eye is so chilling. It really is a telltale heart situation. I'm on to you, Avery. What? You're the fastest learner we've had here yet. I forget you're still new. I feel like he's not just talking about the cafe work. Well, I've been doing a lot of studying. So you have. So you have. He lets go of my shoulder and turns away to the rest of the employees. He definitely was not talking about the cafe. He definitely knows something about that book. I'd ask him more, but maybe it's not a good idea in front of everyone else. I'll chase him down later when he's leaving or something. I have to get more information. Where's Mason? I wanted to see her today, too. She hasn't been showing up as much on days off lately. Maybe she's found a comfy gig at an old cat lady's or something. Haven't been to your place in ages, though. Oh! Ah! When did you get here? You startled me! Ah, uh, Mason. I'm so glad you're here. It wouldn't be the same if you didn't join us. As much as I adore your cooking, today I'd rather give you respite. Think I'm gonna cook on my day off? Huh. Of course not. That is why I will take the pleasure of providing you, my dear employees, with dinner today. But first, an announcement. Oh boy. He slips back into the kitchen for a moment. When he returns, he's holding a garment bag. No. You haven't even let me make the announcement. I know what this is. Absolutely not. <laughs> for my more cooperative employees, then. With a surely practice flourish, Graves unzips the garment bag and lets it fall to the floor. Oh no. 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 Is that somehow both plaid and checked, ch checked, checked flannel? I didn't know you could make a suit out of that type of material. There's a sort of appalled silence from everybody. Reese looks personally offended. <laughs> Mason is just out of here. No appreciation for your new uniforms. And to think, I had it made in your size, Avery. Try it on, Avery! She's still shouting down from the balcony. I can't blame her, though. I wouldn't want to get any closer to that suit, either. I'd rather wear a potato sack. And I went through such trouble to have it made. Check with us next time before you waste your time. "'Tis easier to beg forgiveness than ask permission, as they say." "'See, you knew we wouldn't agree to it." "'Well, I'll leave this here in case you all come to reason. Take some time to admire it. I'll be off for one last errand, but trust when I return you'll all be treated to a wonderful meal. Until then, farewell." And with that he disappears into the kitchen. I'm going to follow him, just to see what happens when he leaves. I get to the kitchen in time to see him slip through the back door. I'm sure I'm going to see that black cat. I just know it. I peek out the door as he leaves. He gets further and further away from the cafe, but I don't see him change. Not even when he gets past the point where I know he's off cafe grounds. Hmm. 
I guess the others already assumed he wasn't affected by the curse, but why? Does this prove he's the culprit? How else would he escape whenever it was whatever it was that got everyone else? Although, to be fair, I can't use that as proof. After all, I also escaped the curse, and I sure as heck didn't cause it. This seems like a, as good a time as any to see if I can find out more about what's going on. I peek back into the main cafe. Looks like everybody's back to whatever they were doing before. The newly arrived Mason has kicked up her feet on the couch and seems to already be dozing off. Finley did say we have free access to Graves' apartment, after all. I could go look and see what he's got hiding up there. I'm also kind of curious about what it looks like. Awesome. But then again, if he was hiding something there, wouldn't somebody have noticed by now? Maybe he keeps all his magic stuff in the creepy basement. I wonder which would be better to search. 